I mean, I, again, I always like to cook, but I didn't start, but I didn't start posting on social media until it was actually my boyfriend was the one that was like, you need to start posting on social media. You need to put your face on it. And I was like, that's so cringy. And then I was also kind of against it too, because of our job. And I was like, nobody posts on social media. Like, I don't, I don't really want to post. I was kind of against it at first. And then I kind of said, fuck it. I was like, I don't really care what people think anymore. And I started posting. And then the more I started posting, the more opportunities that I got. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Street Cop Training Podcast. I'm your host, founder and CEO of Street Cop Training. My name is Dennis Benino, and I just got back from Greece. A lot of people don't know that. So this is the first day I'm not jet lagged. Frank, I was a cranky bastard yesterday. But guys, <laughs> in the studio is uh, Kenny Williams. He's our uh, laugh track in the background. You might be able to hear it. He's been filming stuff all day. He's here in New Jersey, as he typically is for the June uh, tour, Red Ninja Tour, here in, in New Jersey. But anyway, today... Good, interesting, different kind of podcast. Somebody I reached out to, I saw her Instagram. It intrigued me. I thought it was really cool. She has no idea why the fuck she's here. <laughs> she really, you have no idea why you're here. I could assume why I'm here. Yeah. Well, let's hear what you, what's your assumption? I would assume that I'm here because you need to figure out how to not make law enforcement your life and figure out hobbies outside of law enforcement. Mm, you're close. Somewhat close. You're close. We're going to explore some things. So her content's <laughs> really fucking good. I want to dig into her business, the stuff that she does. Everybody's got to follow her. You're going to like her shit. It's really good. But I repracticed her last name. I'm going to give it a go. Alexandra <laughs> Donadio. You got it right. Yeah. So just so we're clear, you're a law enforcement officer in the state of New Jersey. We're not mentioning names. But tell me about where you grew up, how you ended up in law enforcement, and then we'll go into start talking about what I'm really interested in is to find out where this cooking passion comes from. And I just want to point something out real quick. Here is somebody who is, quote unquote, a professional chef, Italian, and shows up to a fucking studio empty fucking handed. Not one fucking cannoli, <laughs> right? Not one ravioli, not one piece of that smoked meat I see on your shit all the time. This motherfucker should, your grandmother <laughs> would be having a fit right now. Rolling over. Dude, I'm telling you, you don't do things like that. I know. Even our not Italian friends bring stuff in. Could have brought a chocolate egg clair or something. You're up from, <laughs> That's fair. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, so let's start. Tell me about your life, where you grew up, and I ended up as a cop. Okay, so I grew up in Hillsborough, New Jersey, which is literally not far from here at all. Mm -hmm. um, middle of nowhere. Uh, I have four younger brothers. So you have four younger I brothers? I have four younger brothers. Yeah. I grew up in a... My dad coached wrestling, and my, all my brothers wrestled. So I grew up in a very wrestling build household so yeah i grew up in hillsborough and then my dad actually uh grew up in newark and then moved to scotch plains and when i was in college i always had an interest in like crime scene and forensics and um i won't mention it on the podcast but it wasn't until some like personal stuff happened that i was like okay this is what i want to do for the rest of my life i made it a goal of mine to become detective and i wanted to essentially be able to help people which i know sounds so cliche no, I think it's honestly, I actually think that that's what most people take this job for. Yeah. Uh, I said it to somebody one time, they're like, that sounds fucking cliche. And I'm like, but dude, that's actually really the motivation. Yeah. Like, it's a very honorable thing to do to make fucking shit money and go out and put your yeah. life on the line every single day. You know what <laughs> I mean? We make minimum wage. My 18 year old brother makes almost more than we do now. Oh, dude. <laughs> but it's worth it. So tell me about like where the cooking thing started from and like how that started to progress. Yeah. So, I mean, having four younger brothers, I always kind of cooked for them. Shit, really? Yeah. So how old are your younger brothers? Like, I don't even know how old you are. I'm 29. Okay. And how old are they now? They are, oh God, um, 24, 23, 22, and one just turned 18. Yeah. So you were definitely like the old, like the second mom in the house. Yeah. And it's funny, the 18 year old now wants to go in law enforcement and he is- Because of you, you think? I think it's because of me yeah. and because um, he doesn't, he like doesn't know what he wants to do. He's like, but he's like, I want to be in a pension. I'm like, okay, that can't be the only reason why you want to join law enforcement. Mm, like you have to kidding. do it for, for other reasons. And um, he's like, okay, so I'll go work in corrections. And I was like, maybe <laughs> I was like, Luke, you like to eat snacks. You cannot work in corrections. Like you don't have enough discipline for that. Go to PD or go to a sheriff's office and start out there and then work your way up or work your way out somewhere. Yeah. I don't think people work their way from a police department to a corrections division. No. That's usually no. the opposite direction. And by the way, 
to be very clear, I worked in corrections for a couple of years. Um, it is a very, very difficult job. Uh, I commend everybody who does it. I think about you guys and girls all the time, and I know that you're like the unsung heroes, but at least there are a lot of us who appreciate what you do, and we know how difficult the job is. So that's not a yeah. knock on corrections. No, absolutely yeah, not. Just, I think at 18, you know, it's hard to be set in stone in a job that is difficult. I mean, I started when oh. I was 19. Jesus. Yeah, it was not. <laughs> Like, dude, it was, I was like on the verge of either making it or not <laughs> so making it. So then you can it. go, you go talk to him. Oh, like, yes, give me his enjoy number. your 20s. Enjoy being 18 and 19 before you settle there down. There are things, yeah, I mean, listen, he has a lot of options. So if he wants to yeah. have the conversation, if we want to bring the next Donatio in oh, no. <laughs> and stick him on the fucking podcast and we can go into over it, like that actually probably <laughs> be a good podcast, have an 18 year old kid who wants to be a cop come in yeah. and do a conversation with him. Like he could fire questions at me. All right. So we'll set that up too. <laughs> Fantastic. Go beat your family reunion next year. Yeah. Let's face facts. <laughs> you're you gonna be have fucking them all cooking. in here. There's not gonna be enough room for yeah, everyone. Yeah, you're gonna bring all your four brothers in. <laughs> all right, so you're cooking for them. Yeah, so I, I cook for How them. How old were you when you started cooking? I would say as young as like 11. Like it would be something as simple as making ramen or making mac and cheese or sandwiches for them. Um, but then, you know, when I went to college, I would be making simple dishes for myself uh, just because I was living on like a bartending bartending salary. Where so did it you was work? A, what, bar, what bar? I worked at a lot of bars. No shit. Yeah. So you're making sandwiches. You, you're working at bars. <laughs> you're making meals for yourself. Yeah, bartending. I never once worked in a kitchen. Is there a bar that we would know that you worked at? Probably. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, one of them closed New down. New Jersey. Where did you work? Uh, Clark and uh, Bedminster, um, Basking Ridge. Can I guess the one in Clark? Yeah. Was it the, was it the, what's the, did it close? It might have. I don't know. Okay. It used to be like a mini golf course no, and an know. Irish pub. No, no, no. That was a fun place to work. Um, yeah. So then, um, I mean, I, again, I always like to cook, but I didn't start, I didn't start posting on social media until it was actually my boyfriend was the one that was like, you need to start posting on social media. You need to put your face on it. And I was like, that's so cringy. And then I was also kind of against it too, because of our job. And I was like, nobody posts on social media. Like I don't, I don't really want to post. I was kind of against it at first. And then I kind of said, fuck it. And I was like, I don't really care what people think anymore. And I started posting. And then the more I started posting, the more opportunities that I got. But with cooking, we would always have like Sunday fun day. And I grew up always having Sunday dinner with my family too. So cooking was always, always important to us. And then I kind of used it as an outlet for like when shit went south, I would kind of go into the kitchen and spend all day making pasta or all day making tortellini. Yeah. So one, I guess one of the main reasons why I love cooking is because I use it as a stress relief. And when I want to be by myself and I want to kind of be with my own thoughts, I will spend all day trying out a new recipe, but it's also good because when I want to bring my friends and family together, it's a good way to kind of make a comfort meal and have everyone all in the same room. I believe it or not like to cook. I'm actually a very good cook. Yeah. People have asked me to cook, but I'm so busy, I don't have time to cook. When I cook, like I used to cook for people here years ago, and they're like, yo, you're going to cook for us this week? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I think about it. If I have time, I, but I don't have time anymore. I haven't, I haven't made a sauce in like fucking five years. Sounds like you need to. It's an all day thing, man. I don't have time like that. Yeah, that's true. I'm not trying to sound fancy. Like, I'm busy. Yeah. I don't have time to make a sauce. Well, and it's hard to like, it's funny, like I finally got a good balance between work and then doing the food stuff. And then they're like, bam, we're doing an on-call schedule. Fuck. <laughs> like, I finally found a good medium to balance doing things for food outside of work and then for, for actual work. And then they, like, toss that on. So now I'm like, okay, I need to find a new balance. Mm, interesting. How has your job responded to your social media stuff? They give you a hard time? Um, no, no one really gives me a hard time. Because it's really, it's really bland. Like, I, it's it's food. really good content. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, like I feel like I try to keep it as appropriate as possible, yeah. and I try to not mention anything about where I work or anything about do what even I do. Know you're a cop? No. no. Yeah, I didn't think so. No, it's really funny. Like I'll go to events and they're just like, "Oh, you're like an influencer," and I'm like, "We'll go with that." Like we'll we'll leave it as as just that. <laughs> like no. I think you're actually on the verge of like, a, and you're probably going to tell me this afterwards if I kind of read into things of really going there. I think you got something very very special. Thank you. Yeah. I hope. It's like, it's funny because like I do all the filming. I do all the editing. I do. That's my point. Everything, which is such a learning experience and so difficult. It's slowly getting easier to do. And I finally got a camera. So that's a good, 
Tell us your forward. handle on Instagram so people know where to find you. Are you on other platforms as well? I am. So it's Cooking with Zanjas. What does that mean? <laughs> well, my full name's Alexandra. And growing up, none of my brothers could say my name. So they all called me Zanj. I love it. I don't know where the spelling came from. And then I made it Zanj because I honestly didn't think that anything was going to happen from posting on social media. And again, like I didn't really want anyone from work to know like, oh, I'm posting. I don't know what the reason behind it was, but I was just like, oh, I'm going to keep this secret. Like I had a baby photo as my as my handle oh, wow, photo, yeah. like so nobody could know who I was. And then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, I'll just go, I'll just go all out. So posting with Zan, spell it for everybody so they can follow you. You should, honestly, I think everybody should follow her account. <laughs> you might get a few followers from this. From I this, hope yeah. so. Yeah, oh, yeah, I think you're going to be good. Yeah. It's, Listen, it's worth it. I, yeah. I, th- I really, I think everything is done. So when I saw your shit and I was like scrolling through people's stuff, I was like, who's coming to these classes? I was like, this is good. Yeah. Like, well, it was, he was like, his class was awesome. Like, I would definitely take one of his classes again, but. And it was in the woods too, so we could start a fire and then actually do barbecue out there. You should do something like that. Yeah. So like in business, anytime you have a thought and it sounds a little silly like that, that's where the gold is. Like barbecue and shoot guns. Oh my God. You're like making my fucking like <laughs> creative juices flow. <laughs> like you have no idea. Flip the steak and shoot. And shoot. Like, oh, like that's exactly right. <laughs> Why not? No, no, no. When it's nice out, that's you're going down there. That's it. That's yeah. exactly what you should do. If you do a video of you cooking and shooting at the same time, you're going to get 80,000 followers. Well, and it's so funny too, because like my boyfriend says it all the time. He's like, you should just tell people like what you do during the day and like add, incorporate mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. into your social media. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, He's I right. I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready for that yet, but you know what? I should just say, fuck it. Like I did last time. Why haven't you gone into a profession of cooking? I don't know. I, think, I do know. I know. Why? Because you're worried. Yeah. You, you like the safety net quote unquote of having a job job. Oh, ab- well, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because it pays the rent. It pays the bills. It pays what I need it to pay. And then I too didn't think, sometimes I feel like I underestimate myself when it comes to cooking. Like I know, I know I'm good at it and I know that. It's have- very special. <laughs> it's a very special page. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I think that you are really underrating and under undervaluing yourself. And yeah. I think you have a, you're sitting on something very, very interesting. And I think it looks very different than a lot of things. And I think you could do a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I'd be happy to give you some advice anytime you want. Um, you're not the only person I would give some business advice to. Yeah. But the, you know, I, I look at it and I'm like, that's kind of why I wanted you to come here because I wanted to start going into, how come you're not doing that? Yeah. If you could make, if God said to you right now, like, tell me what your life, if you could make a life for yourself right now, what would you ideally be doing in the food industry, social industry? Tell me about that. Okay. So. I think I would open up, well, it's very hard to open a restaurant, but I think I would take my chances and open up a restaurant. Can I ask you a question? Why do you think it's very hard to open a restaurant? Because a lot of them fail. You know why they fail? Because people have a negative attitude? No, because people don't know what they're doing. That's fair. You know what's crazy? In business, you could be shitty at business, but if your product is that good, yeah. you could not know dick about business and still survive and grow because your product is that good. And I see it. Well, and that's like all the small dinner parties that I do. I've literally been doing like 10 to 15 people dinner parties because that's all I can handle by myself. And, you know, I want to be able to do more with that. Open a restaurant, cook what I, <laughs> cook what I love. This is where I wanted to go with this. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about that. And we'll go back to the other question. Dinner parties? What are you getting for t- to cook for 10 to 15 people? It depends. Um, so normally the way I've been doing it, because I am terrible at math and I'm terrible at numbers. And if I could cook for free for everyone, I would, um, I print out a menu. So you can either pick like two appetizers, a salad and an entree. Um, I can't bake to save my life. So dessert I have to figure Most out. Most people don't cross over into baking. Yeah. I'm not a baker. I don't give no. a fuck about it. I don't like, I actually, I appreciate some desserts, Yeah, but I don't give a fuck about them. No. Like I do about like smoked meat. Yeah. Like, or, or even, like a tomahawk delicious yeah um but yeah so I'll, I'll make a menu and then what i've been doing is i'll say like pick what you want off of this menu and i have an idea of how much it costs so then i'll like put <laughs> this is probably a terrible way to do this but then i'll like take everything that i need put it into the like online shopping basket and then i'll divide it up by how many uh, people are going and then i'll do like a per person where i can still make some money do you how often are you doing 50, 10 to 15 person dinner parties? I haven't done it in a while, but I've been doing different events. So like 
a couple weeks ago, I did Brisket King with one of my friends, Joey Machado, who's like famous in the barbecue world. That's he's cool. literally like, he's such a nice, nice person. And they always are, dude. his wife is awesome too. They like, are. it was just so, I felt good like hanging out with them because they're just like such positive people. And he has so much knowledge when it comes to barbecue too. So, like, it was just a great time. And he ended up placing in uh, Brisket King for Don't Mess With Texas. So him and his wife drove up from from Texas and brought all the briskets. I we watch like, your shit. I know everything you're talking yeah. about. I find <laughs> yeah, so your stuff did, very interesting. Did that. Yeah, so I've been I've been a little bit busy doing doing that. And then I have a couple other events coming up that are very similar to that as well. Um, the last one that I did, I didn't do ribs, but I did kind of, I posted it on my page. It was like if focaccia bread and cornbread had a baby. And then I roasted jalapenos mm-hmm. with like a roast of garlic oil. And I ended up making that at, uh, at Rib King. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. You sold it too, right? Oh my God. Well, so like that was what expenses were paid. And it was literally one of the first things that was gone. Like I made over 700 portions and we ended up cutting the portions in half because people kept coming back, which was a great thing. And, um, and then we ended up running out like two hours before yes. the event. Hey everybody, I'm Heather Glogolich, instructor here for Street Cop Training for the course, The Complete Female Cop. This class is not just for females. It's not just about gender specific issues. It was really formed in order to allow people to find that passion again for policing, to understand that their self identity doesn't need to be changed just because they want to fit the mold and to really help bring about change, change in the profession, not just for women, but for everybody to be heart led servant leaders. If you're interested in taking the course, you can visit streetcop.com and search Heather Glogolich and you'll be able to find it. I'm also really excited to announce that I have a new course coming out. It's going to be called Be The Change. Some of the great feedback I got from this year's conference in Nashville was that the men in this profession didn't feel like they wanted to take a spot away from the women that they work with for my first course that I teach. And so I was really able to sit down and put it together a course about culture change and building effective teams and learning about a growth mindset versus stagnation mindset pushing forward and just being the best cop that you can be both personally and professionally. So really excited for that to be coming out soon. Keep an eye out for it. Thank you all so much. Stay safe and be the change. So wait, let's go back to like how you would, if, if God allowed you to design your life. So it's a yeah. restaurant. I would do a restaurant. Um, I would obviously do cocktails because I love mixing cocktails and like mixing drinks You do together. not know the gold mine you're sitting on. You have no idea no. the potential that you have. <laughs> and like, we're going to talk about this off the air because they're going to, like, I don't want to put you in a position that you're like, you know what? I am leaving my job. <laughs> Fuck everybody. Bye. Right. Well, and that's what like, I was telling you before is like, I'm so grateful I'm in a position where I have leniency to like take calm time when I need to. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not a, as big of an issue as it would be at other departments. I have a lot of things to tell you, but I can't do it right now. I'll do it later. But okay. so you would be, you would open a restaurant. I would open a restaurant. And I think what I would do. What is, kind of restaurant would you open? Well. I've actually been thinking about this a lot. I would do, because I love meat and I love pasta, I love Italian food. I would do like a cross mix between like Argentinian meat cooking style. Are you 100% and, Italian? Yeah. Okay. And, um, and then also incorporate Italian food as well. I would try to like take what I have from my experience in Texas and like the knowledge that I learned with smoking and cooking meat and then also kind of fuse it together with Italian food that I grew up with. I feel like I, you can't go wrong. I have so <laughs> many those. fucking ideas that I can't. And by the way, Sean Grogan just walked into the studio. Hi. <laughs> yeah. He's my old partner. Did you know that? Now he's an instructor at the, at, the, at the company. That's awesome. Yeah. So when did you start filming the content? I would say, so it's funny. I had a page before I have the page that I have now. So I started posting i started posting pictures and the pictures were like fucking terrible it was literally like on a paper plate and i would just be like oh made like short ribs for dinner tonight or like made this and then that was kind of like when i started experimenting and um kept posting on that and my boyfriend was just like you need to post your face and i was like no still posting in to-go containers like from a straight business point like yeah. it's a big part of why i think you're having some of the success, I think you you literally could have a few little tweaks and a little few pieces of advice and you could really yeah. explode. Like, no bullshit. Yeah. Like, I think that you're right there. And that and no, was like, like I told Frank, I'm like, I'm bringing her in because I just want to fucking business coach you and just unlock that next door for you where you're just like, I didn't fucking know I could do this. Yeah. Well, and that's what it is too. Like, I say it all the time. I'm like teetering on the line of like, I'm literally right there 
and I just don't know how to exactly like push it forward. Because this is new to me too. Like I have no idea what I'm doing. And all of this, um, what I was saying before was that I was posting on social media on like paper plates and just bullshit. And then that account actually got hacked and I couldn't get into it. Granted, I had like a thousand followers. Like Mm -hmm. it wasn't a big deal, but I was like kind of upset about it because I was like, I lost everything that I've been posting for the last like two years, which was literally, if you go back and look at it, it was nothing. And so I made a new page and then that was my, uh, my boyfriend was like, okay, we're going to take a picture of you and you're going to post this on your page and you're going to like do X, Y, and Z. Then I started filming more. I started editing more. I started like trying to take it a little bit more seriously. And then that's kind of it's really done right well. now. It's really done very well. <laughs> Thank you. Let's talk about, let's, let's go to the business side of this a little bit because then I, 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 I do want to reverse engineer how you're going to that next level, but let's talk about this a little bit just to help you some things now. Um, I think that you can film and I think you should send the video off to Upwork or Fiverr. Uh, we'll give you our people who will edit stuff for you for five bucks, yeah, seven dollars. Uh, not everybody does that. Some of our real magical stuff we have. We obviously have four or five in-house editors here. Yeah, but that will save you a lot of time. My God, I edit videos like it's so funny. Everyone at work though, like, do you know you most wedding doing? photographers and videographers don't even edit their own shit. They just film it. Yeah, and they send it off to be edited somewhere else. Well, and that's like all these like events that I go to. They're just like, oh, who does your videos? Who does this X Y Z? I'm like, I do. They're like. It. Like I'm like yeah, I'm a peasant. <laughs> like I do all of my own stuff. But like, you can take like seven bucks and go and like let somebody else do it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. For seven dollars, and it'll come back really good. Yeah. So then, why waste the time? Then you can spend more time on other things. Yeah. Or cooking more and like trying to experiment more. Or other things, right? So you could film more things. You yeah. Put more content out. So business, just a little business one one. The best business people know how to prioritize mm-hmm. what they're doing with their time in their day. Well, be it you might have 700 things to do. Yeah. The best person can select the things that are the most important to do. Sometimes I set a timer. Like I, if I know I have like 8,000 things to do, like, and I don't want to get distracted easily, like I'll set a timer. Like I'll sit on the couch and be like, okay, I'm going to edit for 45 minutes, set a timer for 45 minutes. And then I'll get up and do what I have to, the other thing that I have to do. That's your first piece of homework now is to spend the $7. <laughs> on getting someone to edit my videos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, I'm telling you, you're making a huge mistake yeah. with that. Leverage is everything. Yeah. If you're the person who's into this, obviously you have to film. They're not going to be able to fly you from the Philippines and film you. But, um, you know, you're going to spend that time doing those things. I think the content's great. I don't think you have to change much. I like when you talk more yeah. to the camera, I, but I don't think you need to be Julia Child where you're like, I'm going to then take this and put it in the pan, <laughs> eat your pan, because that's what everybody else is doing, right? Yeah. Right? So everybody else is telling you how to cook. I think watching you make it without saying much about it yeah. is pretty cool. That's why sometimes I try to do the voiceovers too. Like, but a lot of the stuff, like I just make up as I go along. That's why there's no like recipe yeah. or there's you're no nothing. You're super creative, man. I People don't realize, I, I hate to be like, you're, to me, it's like I'm talking to somebody who, uh, with the right dialing in, may have a real, maybe on a real stride here to go do something really good. Um, so my goal is to try to help you understand some direction, calm some of your fucking anxieties down about the <laughs> world. Yeah, everybody has yeah. them. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I, I just, you can tell the passion in the work. Yeah. And that's, that's an important thing to have. A lot of people don't have that because you're so passionate that you're doing things so stupidly in business. Like, it's just fucking... No, you're right, though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, before you go into a restaurant, when you're going to business for the first time, this is for everybody. You want to keep overhead expenses as low as possible. Like, that's the last thing you want to do is be signing leases. Yeah. And, you know, without an investor who is believing in your, in your side of things and has an unlimited amount of money, bills will kill a business fast. Yeah. So the least bills you have, there's a book called The Lean Startup. It's a really good book to read. So if you actually start understanding business in the sense of like grabbing some of these books and then infusing some of this business knowledge with your passion for cooking, mm-hmm. you might be on a real gold mine here. Yeah. My suggestion is, is like, I, if I was you, would become a boutique chef who travels, who's an Insta. This is how I would start it if yeah. I was you. I'm an Instagram influencer. People know who you are. And then I would film myself at a, like you would say, and I'm not trying to get anything for free, but I'm saying just for an example. Yeah. Hey, can we film that? Why don't we do it at your house in your backyard? I got the backyard for it. Yeah. We'll, we'll film, film it for you. You come over and cook. Tell us what you're making. Show you serving everybody. And right. then people will be like, 
oh shit, like, you know, and then like, don't even fucking, don't even write hook it yet. Don't yeah. ask, don't do the ask yet. Um, and then just like, I would start to build the storyline or the dialogue around like, this is who I am. This is what I do. Because then people start following your shit and they're from yeah. Montclair and fucking Bergen County. Everywhere. Right? Like, so when they're like, yo, we didn't know you actually, we could hire you to come do our shit. Yeah. Like, how much is it a person? Guy, $150 a person for somebody who lives in a fucking $12 million house is nothing. That's true. Right? You could probably end up, you could probably ask for two to 250 a person for that, those high end clients. Yeah. But the variable of that is, is you can have a guy like me who, if I had 10 or 15 people over, I would pay you $150 a person. No problem, right? Yeah. If I had like, if it was like me, Kenny, but somebody, something real fucking significant, I'm gonna do something really good for nice for people. Yeah. That's what I would do. I would, or I would say, hey, look, we're gonna have 30 people. Mm -hmm. We don't need the same quality food. Yeah. But I want you to make the same per person or close to it. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it'd be more people, but it's the same amount of money. Yeah. So I, I like that idea. I like boutique stuff. Yeah. The, the, the overhead's very low. It's all about your variable. That's what I'd be filming. I'd be filming that stuff. And that's where it starts to grow. So now you're doing, now you come two birds at one stone. So now you're cooking for people, right? Making money there. And getting content. And you're getting content. Yeah. And then you start to, that's how it starts to all build and grow. Man, like I can't emphasize enough to you like what you're sitting on. And it's the best the kicker is, it's you. Yeah. It's you. You're just something very refreshing about your presence, your passion for the food. You know, it's, it's a gold mine. Yeah. And you're sitting on it. And it makes me happy. And it makes like, like when I see other people, like even at that event that I did and other people were like coming back for like thirds and fourths, like it's fucking bread. But people liked it and they were like, oh, this is they so good. Like they loved it. Stop, stop, yeah, it made me happy. They sure did. Yeah, I, there's just, for me, I, I, I'm a foodie. I love food. You probably love it more than I do, obviously, um, because I have other things to do. You know, like yeah. change the whole world, shit like that. Make it a better place. Make it a better save lives and things <laughs> like that. That's stupid shit. You know, reinvent police work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, uh, which is crazy because like we actually are doing that. It's fucking nuts. Yeah. Um, you had no context of us before this, right? I mean, like I knew who you guys were. Really? Uh, yeah. Everyone always talked about Shriek Cup training or like the videos. People would always send me like Shriek Cup training videos. But um, again, like I always tried to keep the food stuff separate. So I try not to follow like any cop related anything. Like, I guess I just didn't really want to stir the pot on my food page. Don't stray away from the idea that people don't yeah. like the cops because everybody's a tough guy on the Internet. You may uh, you uh, may lose. Yeah. Three percent, but you may gain twenty nine or one hundred and forty six percent because of that crossover yeah so i think it's a really i don't think you need it i honestly don't i think who you are you don't need that to boost who you yeah. are i think it's interesting i think it'd be interesting to like be a reveal later on yeah but i think that you just who you are is just fine the way it is well and it's funny too like when i go places and people find out what i do during the day it's like what and i'm like yeah because i don't like I would love to sit there because i was proud when like i was proud of myself when i graduated the police you academy and i went through it and I feel like with a lot of the times with this food stuff, I kind of just like keep it to myself and keep it a secret. And it's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just an influencer. Like, we'll leave it at that. And then when people find out, it's like 8,000 questions at once. I know. You ever shoot somebody? Yeah. What's, what's, the, hard, what's the crazy thing you ever saw? Yeah. <laughs> right? What's like the craziest thing, like, yeah. the like scariest moment of your career? Yeah. <laughs> You've been in a car chase? You know, I, I, um, I don't think you need it, but I would never try to like not be proud of it. I just put a tweet out yeah. today that said like, it's okay to be proud of what you do. You should be. Yeah. Doing a very selfless thing. Do you follow my Twitter account? I don't have Twitter. You follow my Facebook account. I'm sorry, my, my Instagram account. Yeah. Did you see the thing I put out? I haven't been on Instagram all day oh today. Oh my God. No food. Not follow me on Instagram. It was my only day to run errands. I actually like ran errands like an adult today before I came here. What questions do you have for me? Because I think what, what's going to happen is we'll have Al do a little work behind the scenes. I got like 16 questions for you. Yeah. And I'd love to have you come back on in a little bit and like tell us what you've been doing next if you'll actually listen to some of the shit I have to tell you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm praying you listen to what I have to tell you. Why wouldn't I? Because nobody listens. You don't want to know why? Why? Because you let your anxiety dictate your decisions. Everybody does it. Then just breathe. It's rare that yeah. somebody will actually go, you know what? I'm going to not let my anxiety dictate my, my decisions yeah. and my actions. I don't, right? Like I just, I follow the fear. I follow it like it's my compass. Well, it's that's my why North you're Star. successful. I'm trying to help you understand that. Yeah. And successful is an interesting word. I thought I was successful to this past week in Mykonos. 
<laughs> what are people making two hundred million dollars a year in the porn industry? <laughs> right. So I'm like, what the fuck? But I think that there's uh, cool stuff to happen here, and maybe maybe you'll listen to me. Yeah. Maybe. We'll see. Fuck it. I'm gonna very very low risk plan you, and I want to like get feedback if you'll allow me to like give you some guidance and. Yeah. And, and give you a little bit of your, of your coach. I think I just need to like stop caring what I, other people would think. Isn't it interesting that you already know what your problem is? Yeah. Um, how was your experience today on the Street Cop podcast? I liked it. I was honestly like, I wasn't too sure how it was going to be, but I had a lot of fun and I really appreciate you having you me You and on. I have good candor. Yeah. And, and um, you'll, you listen up. There's a big crossover on this podcast from law enforcement to mental health, to yeah. entrepreneurship to uh purpose and there's a lot of stuff that we we cover on this podcast people ask like how are you guys like typically falling out into a top 100 in the education space and i'm like well we don't just talk about top shit yeah you know and i hope everybody's finding value in these podcasts this is an interesting one for me i was really looking forward to this i was too i was and like i have famous people on here by the way just so you know <laughs> Like, you're the least famous person that's come on, just so we're clear. Thank you. Yeah, we got 5,000 followers on Instagram? I think less. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, you're definitely the least famous person on here. I think even Grogan has more followers than you. And that's not saying a lot, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, no, I really was. I was looking forward to yeah. it. I knew there was something fucking very special here. I'm no, just going to try to help you understand that. Yeah. People are going to write to me and be like, well, what was it, dude? Yeah. What did you fucking tell her? Tell me. I'm trying to cook too, motherfucker. How come you didn't tell me? I'm telling you, I get messages like that. Well, what was it? What was it? Like, what was it? I just was an episode fucking 894 and you had a girl on. Like, dog. Like, what the fuck was it? Um, but maybe we'll talk about that the next time you come back. Yeah. Well, next time we can like set up a little electric station and make lunch. I have my notes here of the things that we have to go over after, after this. No, um, but I really appreciate you having me on. It was definitely we're do it again. Really, Yeah. Yeah. You got to. I'd love to. You got a friend. In me. <laughs> you got to. Wait. So, for everybody didn't hear it the first time or the second time. Tell us where they can follow you. And I really, guys, I'm serious. You should follow her. She's a very interesting account. I'm like giddy about it because I just know it's going to explode. You are on the cusp of it. And I just got to give you, I got to dial in a little there. bit. Yeah, you are right there. The content's excellent. Thank you. I work really hard on it. So that really means a lot. Oh, it's very good. Very, very good. I'm very impressed with it. You it's very hard to pull that off. See in the kitchen. It's like, it looks absurd. But then like, like literally it's like me, I'll like lift a plate up and then like stop recording and then like put a plate into so I can get like a good transition when I edit things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but listen, you know what it looks like behind the scenes here? Just come for a day. <laughs> I it's, would love to. a field to. trip here. It's like, yeah. you want to watch me film TikToks outside, <laughs> right? Like it's like, and then the, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and then the US, fuck. All right. Well, that's why I do the voiceovers because you should see the amount of times, like if I'm sitting there with a plate of food and I'm like, okay. Like, I forget words. I'll be like, tonight we're making pasta. And I'll just be like, pasta is tonight. I'm like, fuck, that's not what I meant. Like, I'll have to redo it like eight or nine times. So when I first started doing this like seven years ago, five years ago, five and a half, six years ago, dude, it would take sometimes like 65, 70 times for me to get shit right. <laughs> you know, now we have the like newer guys coming like, you're really good at this. Like, you just got that done in one shot. And I'm like, yeah, I've been doing it for a long time. Bro. Yeah. This is like my 945th video that I've done <laughs> this fucking year. This is my life. I'm from yeah. the, I'm natural. Dude, now I go on other people's shows. You know, maybe maybe a couple of years ago I'd be like, nervous. Yeah. Nervous, right? And now I'm like, I just so calm. Yeah. I'm just so you just get used to it like anything else. The more you do, I feel like the easier it gets too. Like, and I think I made a video about that where like I'm slowly getting more confident in front of the camera because it is an awkward thing to do. But I feel like the more interviews you do, the more times you're in front of a camera, the more you gain confidence and the more it becomes a little bit easier to just be yourself because it is intimidating to have a camera in front of you and you're like, okay, speak. And you're like, oh my God. You did really good today. <laughs> like, thank you. Yeah. Where they find you? Tell us about it. Um, cooking with Zanges. So it's going to be cooking with and then Z-A-N-D-G-E underscore S. Maybe like seven files from this podcast and we're just going to find like, oh, Frankie, check the analytics again. What the fuck we're done. Yeah, what the fuck? And you're not coming back now. <laughs> and that's on, you're on Instagram, Facebook? Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. Oh, how's your TikTok though? I didn't even look at it. My TikTok? I almost have 10,000 followers now. Yeah. Because I start, I was posting more on TikTok than I was on Instagram for a while because I thought that that was like. Mm, let's go through all your accounts after this and do. talk about what things you can do to improve yeah. what else we, we think you can do. Okay. Guys. Alexandra Gennadio.
Guys, if you're in an area where you're trying to get to our classes, but we're not close to you, fret not. We actually have on-demand training at streetcop.com. You can take that course online right now, and then you could attend that training in the future at no additional cost. You can redeem your voucher. So you get two for the price of one. We don't want to deny you the ability to take this training now, especially knowing that it can keep you safe at a very minimum, putting bad guys in jail where they belong, and at the maximum, going home to your family. Check out streetcop.com for that offer.